Okay, this how-to video is going to discuss the differences between static shapes and dynamic shapes. So you can see I've got two, two shapes here on the screen. One of them is a dynamic shape, one of them is a static shape. You can see there's a, there's a visual difference between the two. Um, it's got this kind of speckled pattern, uh, and that would mean it's a static shape. Now the main difference really is that th this shape is automatically going to update as I root. So if I, let's do, let's do a root, so we'll, we'll just pick the top layer, and we'll, we'll just start rooting out of this, this BGA here. And you can see straight away it's going, it's going into this DRC mode, it's going to give me a highlight. So as soon as I click it's going to give me some DRC errors, and it's not going to update the shape. So I can then work my way through, as soon as I enter into the dynamic plane, you can kind of see the shape starts to update automatically. And that's the main differences between, between kind of static and dynamic shapes. Now I can, once I've got this, I can, I can then select the shape. So I can use the shape, select shape or void. And then there's a, there's a shape manual void and I can do, you know, elements. So I can manually void this track afterwards. It's going to split the shape because I've cut down the middle and you can see it will actually correct the shape. Now people tend to use static shapes um, if you're not going to be voiding items, if you're just going to have a, def uh, a default bit of copper. Um, now the disadvantage is obviously it won't automatically update if you add wires or tracks through into that. Uh, but the main advantage is it can potentially save you some processing, especially on some large designs.